any game fans, Halloween is coming right up and Steam as usual is having a sale. So my top 10 picks begins with Salt and Sanctuary. Basically Dark Souls but 2D and to date is perhaps the game that best managed to translate that same feeling into 2D. Playing as a shipwrecked sailor on an uncharted island filled with ancient evils, there isn't much of a story here other than exploration and killing bosses, possibly in hopes of getting out alive. However, the mood and atmosphere here is top notch, really doing that whole grim dark thing very well. The areas can be gigantic and maze like, and the combat is that high stakes dance of death famous in the Souls like games. But the fluctuation and tension from an intense battle to the joy of finding a safe point is exhilarating. Boss fights are a highlight here since every boss is fun to fight and there are many possible builds and variants for your character depending on your playstyle and perfect for the season. The Golden Crown Hotel, have you heard of it? Why would you go to such a dangerous place, child? Old oh man, I've slain more vampires than you even knew existed. Speaking of things which go bump in the night, vampires are another popular source to draw from and Golden Crown Hotel has just that. Playing as a human general famous for hunting down vampires, you must infiltrate the hotel to kill an exiled vampire prince. This is a coffee break roguelike with some very interesting mechanics where sunlight and moonlight can both be used, and your character can even turn into a vampire as well. A very thematically strong and well designed one of these which is well worth a play. You don't understand. I'm out for blood. Revenge then. Revenge, yes. And blood too. Little Nightmares is a horror themed puzzle platformer that wants you to overcome your childhood fears and what better way than to throw you into a creepy environment filled with corrupted souls. Your character is tiny in this world, playing with perspective which is something that I like in games, but the horrors that you encounter are truly terrifying, creeps me out to no end and is an experience that will stick with you. A game that pays tribute to the great classic graphic adventures. Meet Sid, the demon of Darkestville. For something a little lighter, try Darkestville Castle, a wonderful point and click adventure game where you play as Sid, the resident demon of Darkestville who spends his days playing tricks on the townspeople, so nothing too malicious but rather an irritant. However, his pet fish is captured by a bunch of incompetent demon hunters, so Sid is out to get him back. Excellent tribute to the Sierra and LucasArts adventure games with wonderfully done art and voice acting. Some other kind of uninspired commentary. Darkestville Castle, because not all stories need a happy ending. Soma is a no-brainer and has been recommended as a top flight horror title. Set in an underwater facility within the depths of the Atlantic Ocean, this sci-fi story tells a tale of artificial intelligence and the stories and concepts that come along with it. it wasn't meant to be like this. Machines have started to think that they are human and it also plays with the idea of extreme isolation and the madness that it can bring. Combining this with the fear of the ocean is very clever and is one of the best stories told in games to date. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that this developer is actually about 20 people strong, so not exactly small and indie since that is a decent size, but for them to be masters of their craft is very encouraging to me.
Wearing a mask is commonplace during Halloween, so of course, Hotline Miami 2, wrong number, features here. The direct sequel to the original, released in 2012, keeps the basic structure intact, where you play as masked psychopaths being compelled to commit mass murder by a voice on the telephone. It has that same 80s vibe and a narrative that jumps around in time and space, which is not that easy to follow, but the minute to minute twitch action is fantastic, if hyper violent and bloody. Another niche but great title joins the list with The Count Lucanor, where you play as a little boy named Hans as he explores a castle in order to find out the name of the blue ghost-like character which will then grant him the title and the riches of the Count Lucanor. Citing games like Silent Hill and Yume Nikki, this is a disturbing story probably inspired by the original German fairy tales that we have all become used to with the Disney versions. This is filled with body horror, puzzles, horrifying creatures and more, all using a deceptively cute looking pixel art style. Surprise! A change of pace from the spooky titles on this list is Iconoclast, a Metroidvania-esque action platformer which took 8 years to develop but was released in 2018 to critical acclaim. It is vibrantly coloured and beautifully detailed with a central story about giving the finger to authority in order to help other people. The wrench as a central weapon, platforming tool and puzzle solving tool is very well done with fun traversal, challenging bosses and a large and varied cast of characters. This is mainly on the list since it is A. Fantastic and B. It is currently at its historic low price at 60% off so if you have not played this, definitely worth a look. For something a little different this Halloween season, how about Guacamele 2? Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, falls on 2nd November this year, so it's not too far off and what better than a metroidvania that draws inspiration from Mexican culture. Playing as our hero from the first game, Juan, who is now retired, you are once again called upon to save the Mexiverse from danger, from another luchador from another timeline corrupted by the mask of madness. However, it is much more light-hearted than that, with a quest for the legendary guacamole and the chicken illuminati being things in this game. But it still features that melee and wrestling focused combat with dimension switching and challenging platforming sections. Another one of my favourites, so this recommendation is a no brainer. I can think of no better place to spend Halloween than the gloomy, ruined kingdom of Hollow Nest. Hollow Knight has been one of the major success stories in indie games over the past decade, and surprisingly, it is from a very small team in Australia, initially kickstarted but absolutely blew up upon release. This is a metroidvania with a wonderful hand-drawn art style where you play as the knight exploring this kingdom in a bit to save it from the corruption. 
much like Salt and Sanctuary, Dark Souls is definitely an inspiration, even to the extent of how it tells its lore and the world building. And of course, the multitude of lore videos on YouTube as well. The combat in Hollow Knight is very punishing, so be prepared to die a lot. But once you push past the first two areas, things begin to open up with fun traversal abilities, some actual variety in the biomes from crystal caves to mountain peaks. All the bug-related characters and enemies are also excellent, hence my interest in bug fables coming up in November. And perhaps what I love the most is the developer. They continued to put out massive free content DLC for the game and to thank original Kickstarter backers who made this possible, they even decided to give them their next title in Hollow Knight Silk Song for free. Sure, it is most probably due to the absolutely massive numbers that this game has sold, but still a nice gesture on their part. If it did bounce off this game, I highly recommend that you come back around to check out one of the best indie games, period. For more of the best indie games, do check out the previous video or click on the recommended playlist and I will see you after the jump.